Auto aftermarket bombers here tonight, starting on the pole of heat race number one from Woodstock in the Wismers Auto Parts 99. It's Amy Fitzsimmons on her outside from Simcoe, the 03D Dakota Pots. Row number two on the inside, then number 1210 from Binbrook, the Pinecrest Farms, O'Neill's Farm Equipment, Murphy's Farm, number 1210 for Derek Dwyer. On, her, on his outside from Dundas, the Jibs Action Sports 32 for Jillian Hills. Row number three on the inside from Hagersville, the number two is Tim Newell. Then it's the AXYZ International 11 for Patrick Abrahamson. The 43C is Clinton Nichols, the 14, Gerald Burnham, and the 188 of Paul Longboat. So here we go on heat race number one for the Bombers. Green flag is out. Dakota Potts in that 0-3-D making a run on the outside. And here comes Jillian Hills in the 32, who runs fifth in the points. Trying to get a good run here in the qualifying heat. So Hills now to the outside of Potts. Now Potts slides up high. Hills has to get up off the edge of the track there. Here comes Abrahamson in the number 11. Yeah, he's made a nice move to get up through the field. Meanwhile, at the front, Potts and Hills going at it side by side. Hills to the outside line, and whoa, we're going to have a rollover due to a tractor tire. Red flag onto the speedway. So Clinton Nichols upside down. He is moving around in the 43C, and... Wants to get out of there. That was a fairly easy rollover, but can't be a good feeling being upside down. And the, one of the most dangerous things in this situation is you don't want the driver to unbuckle themselves when they're upside down. We've seen that uh, be fatal in the past. Uh, just uh, was it last year out east uh, that happened, and uh, so the rescue crew there on scene right away. They there do get unbuckled and out of the car. Clinton Jeffrey down trackside. Clinton's out of the car down here. Getting looked over, but appears to be all right. Car doesn't look damaged too bad either. If you're listening in the pits, there was a debit card found in the tech barn. So see one of the officials in the tech barn if you've lost your debit card. Again, a debit card found in the tech barn. So see one of the officials over there if you've lost your debit card. Or you can just text me your PIN number. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. So they're going to roll Clinton Nichols 43 back over. Clinton Jeffrey right in there in the mix with the safety crew. We have, uh, I'm going to say, the best safety crew anywhere in this region. And uh, Kevin Berry and all the folks from Event Medical Response, all our corner workers, just a phenomenal crew. And on a warm night, they're out there in their fire suits sweating themselves to death. And uh, we thank them for their efforts each and every night. The car doesn't look too bad, I'll be honest with you. I don't see anything really wrong with it other than the roof is dirty. We'll move the tire back where it needs to go. We do have a bit of fluid here on the track, but it's kind of in the bomber infield. So we'll Gales Auto Aftermarket Bomber Division. And it looks like Dave Osborne is going to shoot out here with the little quad runner. And put the tire back into place. This would be the night where we get a GoPro camera and put it in the middle of that tractor tire. Would have been a, made for a great shot. Or a destroyed camera. Well, that too. <laughs> I didn't say I'd pay for the camera. I just said we should put one there. Ready to come back to the green flag with Jillian Hills, your leader, Dakota Potts, sitting in second, and Patrick Abrahamson sitting right there in the third position. Yeah, Patrick had a late start to the season, but he's been picking up the pace a little bit in that number 11 car. Now he gets up around Potts and up into the second spot. Here comes the 1210 of Derek Dwyer, and he will try to take third away from Potts. Abrahamson in the second spot in that 11, doing a nice job as they continue to stretch things out at the front. Jillian Hills continuing her impressive season. She's got two wins on the asphalt at Flamborough, one here at Oshweekin. And Jillian's picked up some sponsors as the season moves along, and she will come around corners three and four the final time and take the, sorry, the white flag this time by, checkered flag next time by. Abrahamson trying to track down the leader, but a little too late in that Denny Hamlin lookalike bomber off of corner three and into four and onto the front stretch. Checkered flag comes out for Jillian Hills in the Lintech. 
Solutions. Car number 32, Patrick Abrahamson, will come home in the second spot. So first qualifying heat concluded for the Gales Auto Aftermarket Bomber Division on Gales Auto Aftermarket night here at the Speedway. Second and final qualifying heat about to come out. The chalk starting on the pole from Hamilton in the JS Rentals RS Construction AMG Automotive. Murray Hydronics number 26 is Ashton Rickey. On his outside, last week's feature winner in the A1, that is Spencer General Thomas. For number two on the inside, the number 22 is Brooke Nelson. On her outside, the 37, Jake Moss. Then it's the 42 of Joe DeBoer. 155, Dustin Longboat. 23, Dusty DeBoer. 97, Max Chichok. And the 909 is Jess Sky. Coming to the green flag, Ashton Riki on the pole. And last week's winner, Spencer General Thomas. You see. Uh, General Thomas are going into corner one. Oftentimes they'll get that left rear wheel up in the air. That's how hard they crank these cars into the corner. And he will come out with the lead on lap number one. Ricky giving chase, then it's Jake Moss and Dustin Longboat as the point. So here's Meyer back in the fifth spot and beyond. So General Thomas will come across the stripe to complete the second lap. Four to go in this final qualifying heat for the Gale Zotto after Mark and Bomber. Ash and Riki continuing to impress. Running second right now and keeping pace with the leader. Max Chichok now up to fourth as he tries to get around the 155 of Longboat for the third spot. Up front is still General Thomas. They're going to have to negotiate the slower car of Brooke Nelson. She has a flat rate front tire and pulls off the track. Yeah, very often we'll see cars out here, right front flats are so hard driving into corners with that right front. Just as I mentioned, the, the opposite, the left rear barely ever gets used. That's why a lot of them just have the donut on there. The battle right now is at the front, as this time battle will be the white flag and Ashton Riki all over the back end of the A1. Yeah, Riki got to the inside of General Thomas in turn two a couple laps ago. White flag out now, and we'll keep an eye on this into turn one and two. Riki is right there, trying to get a good run. Keeps a good line through corner number two. He'll have one more set of corners to try. General Thomas slides up high. Riki to the inside. Who's going to get the win? It will be General Thomas by a nose, then Riki. Then Max Chichok by a nose, then Dustin Longboat. And the divorce, Joe and Dusty. B main for the Bombers coming out on the track starting on the pole. In the 99, it's Amy Fitzsimmons on the row, on the outside of row number one, the number two, Tim Newell. Row number two on the inside, the 43C is Clinton Nichols. On the outside, the 22, Brooke Nelson. Row number three, it's the 37 of Jake Moss and the 909 of Jess Sky. Only four will transfer out of these seven cars now out here on the track as the 94 car We'll get a name on that one. It is the Lucas Smith car, but he emailed me today, said there could be a couple of different drivers in that car. So it's one of those two, but we don't have a name on either of them. So <laughs> One is his girlfriend, and I'll quickly look that up. Okay. Brooke Nelson catches a bump down there in corner three, and the 22 does a bounce, trying to get into the feature event after cutting a tire down in her heat race. Newell is your leader. Nichols coming back after the rollover in the heat, running a solid second right now. So in the 94, it's either Lucas Smith's girlfriend, Sarah, or it's his cousin, Miles Whitney. So we'll find out on that. Meanwhile, up front, though, it is Newell in the number two. And now we see the 909 of Sky take it to the outside of turn number one. That'll be the end of their race. Right now in the final transfer, it is Brooke Nelson in the 22. So Newell leads away. Nichols is right there, though, with two to go here in the B main for the Gales Auto Aftermarket Bomber Division. Gales tonight's race night sponsor, Gale Hill, and the folks at Gales Auto Aftermarket, proud supporters of this division throughout the year. And tonight's race night sponsor for the Brock Leonard Memorial coming up a little later on. White flag is out. Nichols grabs the lead. Yeah, Nichols looking for the checkered flag here in this B main, moves Newell back to second. Behind them, it is the 22 of, of uh, 
Nelson holding the final transfer, but here comes that 94 car. So Nichols will grab the win, Newell second. The question is, who is going to get this final transfer spot? Brooke Nelson pushes up in corner number three, and we'll see, can she hold on for the transfer spot with a flat right front? No, the 94 transfers. Brooke Nelson ended up with a right front flat, and I think it probably happened up there in corner three when she pushed up the banking. So unfortunately, Brooke Nelson will not transfer. She would have had to go and make a tire change anyways. So bad break there for the driver of the uh, Leggett Chevrolet Marble Field is set. We're ready to go. Dakota Potts and Spencer General Thomas, last week's winner on the front row. Coming to the green flag, our first feature of the night, the Gales Auto Aftermarket Bomber Division is underway. So Potts and Dwyer lead them into turn number one the first time. Dwyer will come out with the lead. Trouble for Paul Longboat as he makes contact with the 26 of Riki. Spencer General Thomas, pardon me, the 1210 is your leader, not Spencer General Thomas. That's my mistake. Patrick Abers Abrahamson, right now in the second spot, been doing very well. There is uh, General Thomas coming out onto the speedway up in corner number four, making a late appearance. Yeah, so he will not be able to defend his feature win from last week. It is Dwyer out front with Abrahamson trying to chase him down. And look who's come to third spot now. It is Max Chichok in the 97 but now it looks like yeah. a flat right front you can almost tell immediately when it happens that big clot of mud and now uh, max chichok the right front has gone down now the point leader is into the third spot second place on points joe DeBoer following him in fourth in the 42. side by side for the lead here between dwyer and the 11 of abrahamson and now the black play will come out for the 97 of chichok and he will be sent to the pits with that flat tire up front, still side by side for the lead, and now Dusty DeBoer behind them almost got upside down. Abrahamson, oh, makes collisions there with Dwyer as they go into corner number one. Abrahamson will grab the lead down the back chute, and here comes Dusty DeBoer trying to make a move on the 1210 of Dwyer. Dusty DeBoer bringing Joe DeBoer with him now in the 42. Both of those drivers have feature wins this year. Now DeBoer will get around the 1210 of Dwyer. So Patrick Abrahamson looking for his first feature win, and he hasn't even been running the full season. Impressive start to the year for that driver, car number 11. And Abrahamson doing a good job up there, but he's gonna have your defending champ right on his tail end in just a moment, and lap traffic will start to come into play as well. Yeah, here comes the 23, a Dusty DeBoer driving as the defending champion this year, and he closes the gap big time. Can he work the lap traffic as well as Abrahamson? Well, that time it played in Ab Abrahamson's favor in the 11, and he'll extend the lead a little bit going into corner three. So Abrahamson still up front now in the 11 with three laps left to go. DeBoer still second. And here comes De uh, Joe DeBoer trying to make up ground as well. Two to go, this time by for Patrick Abrahamson. The car bobbles in corner four and Dusty DeBoer closes the gap. The 11's really running a high entry line into the corners and that's allowing Dusty DeBoer to get around to the bottom. Here comes some more traffic though in the form of Paul Longboat. Longboat was down low, now moves up high. Who's gonna get the advantage on this one? White flag in the air. One more trip around, Dusty DeBoer squeezes it in between the car and the tractor tires. Abrahamson not going to give up on the outside. And Abrahamson and DeBoer side by side to the line. Who got that one? I believe it's Dusty DeBoer by a nose over Abrahamson. Then it's Joe DeBoer third. Fourth wow. will be the 14 of Burnham, I believe. Clinton Nichols moved up to fifth in the 43 seat. Well, a great start to our feature events on Gales Auto Aftermarket Night. And the winner in the Gales Auto Aftermarket Bomber Division, the defending champion, Dusty DeBoer, wins by a bumper over Patrick Abrahamson, who was looking for his first career win. Here comes Dusty DeBoer out of the car. Put your hands together for your bomber feature winner tonight in the number 23. Second feature win of the season for Dusty DeBoer as he works to defend his 2013 championship. And uh, you have to work for that one. The, the rookie driver really put the test to you there.
Yeah, Patrick was having a whale of a race. He got out front and he was running the, the perfect line the whole way around. And once the 1210 got a little bottled up, it got by him. And it was going to be hard to get by Patrick. He was, I was a little better, I think, in one and two. But it was so ruddy on the bottom in three and four that I couldn't complete the pass. And then when we came up on the 155, I saw he had a bit of a flat left front or something. So I thought I was going to die blow and it was going to be easy for me. And all of a sudden, off turn four, there he comes, Denny Hamlin comes running back on the outside. And yeah, it was pretty tight at the line. I wasn't too sure if I got it or not, but it was a great race by him. Well, second trophy of the year, and a bunch of folks helped you get here and uh, put that trophy in their hand. Who do you want to thank? Uh, thanks to my family. They always help out. And thanks to all the, all the fans, the people that put so much work in this track. You know, this is Brock Leonard Memorial Night. He put a lot into racing, and there's a lot of fans here that do the same thing, and thanks to all of them. There he is, Dusty DeBoer. He's your feature winner tonight in the Gales Auto Aftermarket Bombers. And we'll get a word over here with Patrick Abrahamson. Your first time on the front stretch. That looked like a lot of fun out there. Almost got the feature win. It was pretty awesome. Uh, I saw Dusty coming up there on the last lap, and he just got to the best of me and got the lower line around 155, and there was not much I could do. Well, a good race for you nonetheless. Second place, nothing to sneeze about when there's 18 cars signed in tonight. Now we'll come over and get a word with Joe DeBoer, third place here tonight. But uh, third place, but you lost a few points on Dusty still. It's all right. It's always awesome to be in vic victory lane, especially after a couple of rough weeks, uh, broken tie rods and flat tires. But uh, a lot of fun. So I'd like to thank Windmill Power Equipment and Dundas Tire for getting me out here again. There he is, Joe DeBoer, third place here tonight. Put your hands together for all your podium finishers in the Gales Auto Aftermarket Bombers. All right, fan appreciation numbers. Four numbers to call out.